most of the time, we expect the majority of our terrible crimes to be committed by adults. Well, that's just not true. A lot of the most heinous crimes in history were in fact committed by children. So if you're ready to dive into the minds of some of the most twisted children in history, buckle up. Because this is the top 10 most evil children in history. Number one is Evan Ramsey. On February 19, 1997, Ramsey armed himself with a Mossberg 500 12-gauge shotgun and arrived at Bethel Regional High School by school bus. He approached the student commons area brandishing the shotgun and shot 15-year-old Josh Palkos in the abdomen. He then shot and injured two other students. Rennie Athens, an art teacher, entered the commons area. After hearing gunshots, Athens said she tried and failed to convince Ramsey to surrender. He then entered the main lobby where he shot Principal Ron Edwards twice, killing him. Ramsey then retreated to the commons area, shooting at once at police. Ramsey later placed the barrel against his chin and reportedly said, I do not want to die, and laid the shotgun on the ground and surrendered without further incident. Evan Ramsey is serving two 99-year prison sentences and will be eligible for parole in 2066. Number two is Jasmine Richardson. Most of the time when we're dating somebody our parents don't particularly approve of, we just go behind their backs. In April of 2006, Jasmine Richardson went somewhere completely different. The youngest person to ever be convicted of multiple murders in Canada is Jasmine Richardson. She was just 12 years old when she brutally murdered her parents and younger brother in Medicine Hat, Alberta. After the bodies were discovered on April 23, 2006, police feared that Jasmine, who was missing, might also have been the victim. She was soon found alive and well, however, with her boyfriend, Jeremy Allen Steink of whom her parents did not approve. Steink, who, like Jasmine, had an interest in goth culture, monsters, and vampires, was also charged with the murders. On July 9, 2007, Jasmine was convicted of three counts of first-degree murder. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison, the maximum penalty for a child under 14 under the Canadian Youth Criminal Justice Act. Number three is Jesse Pomeroy. Probably one of the most savage on this list, Jesse Pomeroy was just 14 when he was arrested in 1874 for the horrific murder of a four-year-old boy. He was quickly labeled the Boston Boy Fiend. His horrible check had begun three years earlier with the sexual torture of seven other boys. For those crimes, Pomeroy was sentenced to a children's reform school but was released early. Not long after, he mutilated and killed a 10-year-old girl who came into his mother's store. A month after that, he kidnapped four-year-old Horace Mullen, took him to a swamp outside of town, and slashed him so savagely with a knife that he nearly decapitated him. Because of his strange appearance and previous abhorrent behavior, he was under suspicion. When he was shown the body and asked if he'd done it, he responded with a nonchalant, I suppose I did. Then the girl was found buried beneath his mother's cellar, and he confessed to that murder as well. He was convicted and sentenced to death. Following a public outcry against condemning children to death, his sentence was commuted to 40 years of solitary confinement. Number four is Joshua Phillips, another 14-year-old to add to this list. In 1998, 14-year-old Joshua Phillips bludgeoned his 8-year-old neighbor to death and hid her body beneath his bed. Seven days later, his mother noticed something leaking from beneath the bed. Joshua claimed that he'd accidentally hit Maddie in the eye with a baseball, causing her to scream. In his panic, he dragged her into his home, where he hit her again and stabbed her 11 times. His story failed to convince a Florida jury who convicted him of first-degree murder. His mother is still appealing the conviction based upon the fact that he was given an adult penalty for his crime. Number five are the King brothers. Most of the time, two heads are better than one are, is a positive saying. The Sunday after Thanksgiving in 2001, the King brothers gave that a whole new meaning. Florida brothers Alex and Derek King bludgeoned their father Terry King to death with a baseball bat in his sleep. The boys then set the house on fire in an effort to cover up the crime. The boys soon confessed to committing the murder, but implicated 41-year-old convicted child molester Ricky Chavez, whom they said was involved in a sexual relationship with Alex, and persuaded them to kill their father. 
Alex and Derek pleaded guilty to arson and third-degree murder and were sentenced to seven and eight years in state prison. Respectively, Ricky Chavez, who helped the brothers avoid arrest after the killing, was sentenced to 35 years after he was found guilty of accessory after the fact to first-degree murder and evidence tampering. Number six is Michael Carnell. On December 1st, 1997, Carnell wrapped a shotgun and a rifle in a blanket and took them to school, passing them off as an art project he was working on. He also carried a loaded 22 pistol in his backpack. Carnell rode to school with his sister and arrived at approximately 7.45 a.m. When he arrived, he inserted earplugs, took the pistol out of his bag, and fired eight rounds in fast succession at a youth prayer group. Three girls died while hospitalized. Five others were wounded. Member of the prayer group Benjamin Strong testified that Carnell dropped the gun on his own accord. When he was finished, Carnell placed the pistol on the ground and surrendered to the school principal, Bill Bond. After dropping the gun, Carnell said to Strong, Kill me, please. I can't believe I did that. Michael Carnell is serving 25 to life in prison. Number 7 is Mary Bell. On the 25th of May, 1968, the day before her 11th birthday, Mary Bell strangled four-year-old Martin Brown in an abandoned house. She was believed to have committed this crime alone. Between that time and a second killing, she and a friend, Norma Joyce Bell, no relation, aged 13, broke into and vandalized a nursery in Scotswood, England, leaving notes that claimed responsibility for the killing. Police dismissed this incident as a prank. On July 31, 1968, the two girls took part in a death again by strangulation of three-year-old Brian Howe in a wasteland in the same Scotswood area. Police reports concluded that Mary Bell had later returned to his body to carve an M into the boy's stomach. Mary Bell also used a pair of scissors to cut off some of Bra Howe's hair, scratch his legs, and sexually assault him. As the girls were so young and their testimonials con contradicted each other, the precise details of what happened have never been entirely clear. An open verdict had originally recorded that Brown's death, there was no evidence of foul play. Although Bell had strangled him, her grip was not hard enough to leave any marks. Eventually, his death was linked to Howe's killing, and in August 1968, the two girls were charged with two counts of manslaughter, serving only 12 years apiece. Number 8 is Michael Hernandez. 14-year-old Michael Hernandez was found guilty of first-degree murder for the 2004 killing of his friend and classmate, Jamie Rodrigo Goff, in Miami-Dade County, Florida. Hernandez told Goff that he wanted to show him something in the stall of the school bathroom. Once Goff entered the stall, Hernandez, Hernandez stabbed him several times and cut his throat. Michael Hernandez is currently serving a life sentence at a Florida penitentiary. Number 9 is Nathaniel Brazil. On the last day of school, May 26, 2000, at a Lake Worth Middle School in Florida, Nathaniel, an honor roll student, shot his favorite teacher, Barry Gunrow, in the head. Nathaniel turned 14 when he attended his trial. He was sentenced to 28 years in prison. Finally, number 10, John Venables and Robert Thompson. John Venables and Robert Thompson, both 10 years old, had been stealing things all day at the shopping center. Candy, a troll doll, some batteries, a can of blue spray paint, and other identicals. Why did they decide to steal two-year-old James Bulger? It was a plot. Was it a plot or a sudden, overwhelming compulsion? Once they had him, they didn't know what to do with him. They could have easily discarded him, leaving him alone on the sidewalk by a shop where, where someone would discover the crying baby. But John and Robert, like children who would rather destroy their own possessions than give them to another, murdered the little boy. James' parents would never see their baby alive again. Two video cameras at the mall caught several images of James Bogger in the hands of his killers frozen in time. He was to be taken on a long, aimless walk, cruelly tortured along the way. James was sen senselessly beaten to death by his ten-year-old captors who callously abandoned him on the railroad tracks. John Venables and Robert Thompson both received sentences that would keep them in prison until they turned to the age of 25. This makes them the youngest convicted murderers in English history and the youngest murderers of the 20th century. What is up everybody? My name is John Thompson. I am the editor of this channel. This has been Dean's top 10, most likely of many, 
Um, but you guys need to subscribe to this channel as it's going to get better and better with better content coming your way. You can follow Dean on his Snapchat, his Twitter, and his Instagram. Um, you can also follow me on Snapchat and my Instagram. Um, but there's so much better content coming your way and me and Dean are probably going to hook up and do some videos soon. So you guys better subscribe. Um, thank you guys so much for all the support and love that you guys have been giving us so far. So we'll check you out.